Welcome, one and all. It is Strang Theory Night, Wednesday night. Been going on here now for 327 years, and we're glad to be back with you again on this joyous occasion of a Wednesday night. And here we go. And Chris is on the water. And Mango. I'm not. Mango. Mango, Mango. Bubbly's back. Uh, big deal. Our sponsors, our partners, our brothers and sisters in crime. Boucher Guitars, Levy's Music, G&G Music, Citadel Music, Brickhouse Guitars, K&K, &K, mm -hmm. Gallagher. Big news coming from them very shortly. Recording King, Alvarez, Yeri, St. Louis Music. Big, big reviews coming up for the next couple of weeks on them. Yamaha, big reviews coming up. James Martin Instruments, Close Guitars, Mandolin is coming soon mm -hmm. from Close. Cody Guitars, Orangewood Guitars, another review coming from them soon. Dionario, I mean Dionario, The Ark, Apollo Picks, Epiphone Gives and Blue Chip Picks, Toad Slab, LR Bags, Maestro, Hosen Guitars in Singapore, mm. Mm. my buddy George Crackett, the wonderful George Crackett, Emerald Guitars, our favorite carbon fiber instruments for the high-end discerning consumer. And, Walker, picker. And pickers, yes. Nova Scotia SPCA, Charmed Life Picks, Pickers Grip, Tone Traveler, and I, my good friend David Flamang out in Idaho, one of the finest guitar builders anywhere on the planet. And the only thing you can say after that is welcome to... String Theory, here's John and Chris and Ginger. And here we go. So, I guess we have to do Cable Corner right away. Is that what you're telling me? Okay. So this is a this is a <laughs> this is a shout out moment to my buddy Mitch Malloy down in Florida, mm -hmm. '80s rock singer galore, extraordinaire, extraordinaire was hired in Van Halen, yeah, and got replaced at the last minute. Made great records, still does, still makes great records, and uh, he watches us every week, and he's a close friend of mine. He, he texts me all the time. So I thought I'd do Cape of Corner tonight on something that's quite interesting that I've, I've actually got questions about before. And the questions are this. So I have a ton of Yamaha fans on this channel, obviously, because I'm one. And the question that comes up the most often is, so if I'm going to pick a high-end Yamaha, what is the difference between... The F5 red labels, which are Hamamatsu built, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and going into the high end L series 26, 36, 56. So the, the difference is simple. So the red labels are built under the supervision of Hamamatsu, direct supervision, right? That's what makes them different from the normal assembly line Yamahas that are built. Hamamatsu has its hands in the in the Red Label series. And the FG uh, the FG fives are built in Japan, right where right where Hamamatsu is. Mm -hmm. Not not in that custom shop. It, on the line. But on that line out of so and the threes are built in China. That's the difference. So three, you've got the highest end production they can do with the best materials they can do there. The fives, you've got the highest, highest pr materials and production. Smaller batch. Mm. They're not, and plus they're making thousands of these things, right? But they're making them with all that small shop supervision with the line that's building those guitars. Yep. So that's what the F series is. Now, if you, if you go into the L series, 26, 36, 56. Those guitars are built exclusively in Hamamatsu at that shop. In the custom shop. In the custom shop. So a shop like that can put out about, they have pretty well mastered the, the high volume with small amount of workers thing 
So they can put out about 600 guitars a year. That's a lot of guitars. For for that shop. Mm. And it's a shop just like Robin's. There's 12 or 15 guys in there with a master luthier. Mm -hmm. So, and then, and then if you split up those, that line, the 26 and 36 are built by the, the 12 or 13 or 15 luthiers that work under the master. The 56 is built completely by the master. No one else touches it. So that's the difference. Like there's a huge, there's a huge difference between these guitars. Uh, but they're all, the only thing you can count on for sure is that there's a massive amount of quality control and material selection that goes into everything from the F3 up to the L56. It's, that's what that segment of Yamaha is all about, is the selection of incredibly good tone woods put together in a certain way, certain kind of bracing, certain kind of binding, certain kind of top toning, all these things that go in that don't go into below that in the, the, in the, in the, the, eight, line. In the 800 yeah. line starts to become pure factory guitars. Yeah. But Yamaha is so awesome that they managed to pick out great materials for those guitars as well. As well, yeah. But they're making millions of them, mm. right? So, yeah, it's it's a very interesting question. It'd be and interesting to see the guys actually from the shop going to select from the mass-produced necks. Yeah. And because they're obviously machine built. Yeah. And what their criteria is for selecting the best of the best. Yeah. To take back and put in those yeah. it's, bespoke instruments, really. Exactly. It's a it's a fascinating process because you're dealing with basically Hamamatsu is like a central hub that controls the creative brain of Yamaha guitars, right? So the highest end guitars are all built there right in that room. And then the F the red label series is built by those people in another location. And the F3s are built by a separate crew at another another location again. But the, the, the selection of tone woods and the design is all coming out of the Hamamatsu brain. And everything below that, from 800 series down, comes out of the, the giant mass production factory yeah. brain, which is run by wicked luthiers, yeah. right? They don't hire people who don't know what they're doing. J Yamaha... Is is the best mass production guitar in the world? Yeah, I'm I'm sorry, nobody can touch them. I don't care who it is. They make more guitars than Yamaha or Martin Taylor Gibson anybody. Yeah, and their consistency is like eighty percent across the board. You pick up a Yamaha, it's like wow. But you still have those constraints of a mass line that's always moving. Right, and the shop doesn't have that. No, no. Um, Mitch Miller is wondering how the FS5 compares to the LLS26. Well, there's no comparison at all because the, the, the FS5 is a small body OM style guitar. It's a satin finish. It's mahogany. And the L26 is built by the 12 men in Hamamatsu out of Engelman Spruce or Adirondack, whatever they have in hand, the best possible spruce they can get. And the best Indian rosewood they can get, bound in maple, like the 26 is a masterpiece guitar. It's different than the 36 and 56 for some reason. I don't know why it's different. It's almost as if they built it for different players. The 26 for me is the ultimate finger style guitar. I had one. I wish I had. I never should have sold that guitar. I'm an idiot. But I I fell on hard times and sold it. Right. Us. Yeah. So there's there's no comparison. The there's just no comparison. The the the, the, the red label is built in a larger factory setting, and the twenty six is built under the supervision of the master luthier by about fifteen guys in a single room in Hamamatsu, mm. and the price reflects that. So when you're looking in Canada and you see that an L fifty six costs eight grand, that's why. Mm -hmm. Is there a wild difference in sound though? Yes, there's a wild difference in the tonal palette I of see. the guitars. The 36s are sound are like designed more for the powerhouse usage, bluegrass, 
hard rhythm, big sound. The 26 has huge bottom end without hitting it hard, mm. like that sort of thing. <clears throat> I don't know how to describe it, but the 26 is a massive, a massive endeavor in guitar building. It's just, it's, I've never played one that I didn't love, and it was nothing like any other guitar that Yamaha builds. It's, I don't know why they chose the lowest in the line, right? The Hamamatsu line. Right. You, you can go below the 26 to the 16, but the 16 is built in the same factory as the Red Label 3s, right? But they're built to huge specifications. Like I have my my 16 black, my 16 Deluxe black mm -hmm. for $1,000. Holy crap, yeah. what a guitar. And, and that's Canadian, not US. So... Yeah, there's a huge difference. They, and it's it's easy for them to create that difference because they're, when you're building 26 to 56, those three guitars, they're building these guitars all by hand. There's no power tools in that shop. There's no nothing. There's a legend among guitar builders that the, that the people in Hamamatsu could build guitars by candlelight. And it's absolutely true. They don't need electricity. They have. This is another thing that blew me away. When I first started learning about those guys, they build all their own tools. And so does Yeri, the shop at Kani, Japan. Mm. Kazuo Yeri. Every worker in that shop, all their hand tools are made, they made them themselves. They forged blades, they made handles, they mm. did like everything in the shop is built by the builders, including the tools. Like that's scary, and uh, like in Hamamatsu, when I when I first got involved with Yamaha at that level, they told me the story of this woman who was in Hamamatsu. She's seventy six years old, and all she's done for the past sixty years is carve braces by hand mm. for sixty years, and she is a goddess at this, right? She's the best brace builder in the world. Yeah. One of the best ever. Mm -hmm. And she 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 tunes them, she taps them, she shaves yeah. them by hand with a with a handmade razor. Like just like and you see pictures of her. A seventy six year old woman. She's all wrinkly and old and bit and just Jesus. imagine how many and she's, she's done though. Th millions. Like possibly millions of them, right? Like over sixty years. She put the braces in everything that John Denver ever played. Mm -hmm. She put the braces in every guitar that Paul Simon ever played. Like, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. Like, the amount of history that came out of that shop, out of the shop in Connie for Yeri, same deal. Like, those guys built guitars for some of the biggest names. Waylon Jennings, Willie, Willie played Yeri. Like, those two shops have been around for a combined total of about 175 years. Those two shops alone, right? Yeri's been around for 80, or, yeah, 80 to 90. Yamaha's been around for 70, there's be, 80. There's got to be some documentaries on YouTube. Or... Oh, I wish there was. No? I wish there was. No. That's there, a there's not. Ball, it'll be good to go they're down. very, uh, um, they're very humble about what they do. Mm-hmm. The great thing about the Japanese, those two shops, is that they only build guitars because they love guitars. That's what it is. Yamaha means summit, the summit of a mountain, right? And that's what they have been trying to do for the entire time that they've been building guitars. How can we build the best guitar ever, right? And, and you look at their designs, Yamaha's... <clears throat> body shape and design is completely original it, it it went against all of the designs of martin gibson all those things yeri same yeri followed the west and built dreadnoughts and slow shoulders and mm. he didn't bother messing with the geometry but the guys at yamaha they created their own body shape and angle completely out of circles they and they tested the, 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 the acoustical properties of those angles as they were building this design. And they've kept it ever since. You'll notice that a Yamaha guitar, especially that, the, the ones out of the shops, they don't look the same 
as a Martin Dreadnought or a Gibson Dreadnought or any Dreadnought. If you hold the Dreadnoughts up back to back, they, they don't the, match. The shapes don't They follow. don't match, no. And, it's, and that's amazing. And they've kept that design language for decades, mm -hmm. 80 years, right? And mind you, also, I have to say, too, that both these companies actually are so old that they weren't, they didn't start out building steel string guitars. They started out entirely building nylon string guitars. And they went into Europe in the 30s and 40s and 50s when, they were, when, the, when the original guys that started it were just beginning. In the 40s, 30s, 40s, 50s, they were going into Europe competing against the European builders at these competitions for guitar building. And they were winning. Right? That's scary. Like it's a, it's, they've, they all, both of those companies came from the very beginnings of steel string guitar right to present day and they're still here. Mm. Crazy. The only people that are older than them is Martin and Gibson. Yeah. So, yeah. That's a good, that's a good capo corner. I like that. That's a good dive. So I love you, Mitch. Uh, that's a, that's a, as good an answer as I can come up with. So the first Christian goes to Adam K. Adam K. Mm -hmm. Sounds familiar. Mm -hmm. Go for it, Adam. I just got my brand new Eastman Mandolin MD three fifteen. My Ooh. string action is a little high. Can I bravely lower the action a bit myself without destroying the mandolin? Uh, Jibby? The answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> Mandolins are meant. Mandolin action is meant to be lowered. That's why there's wheels on the bridge. So all you have to do is lower the wheels. Righty tighty. It'll bring the action down. So unless there's a huge hooping ugly looking loop in your neck, you don't have to touch the truss rod ever. Just bring those wheels down. And you'll you'll it'll be up and down like a yo yo for the first ten years. Because Until it settles. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, go for it. Cool. I like it because I like it. I like being able to lower a bridge at will. Yeah. You can take it right down where it's floppy and rattly and then just bring it up a hair at a time, a hair at a time, a hair at a time until it's perfect, right? Mm -hmm. And plus you have dual adjustments as you did on the old Gibson guitars. You have the bass and treble adjustments. So you don't necessarily have to lower one, them both the same amount. Right, And you'll notice there's a, what would I call that? So, if you're raising either side of a mandolin bridge, you'll notice that the middle strings don't react the same as the outer strings. So, when you lower the bass end, the G string is going to tend to come down faster than the D and the A. So, so it's a combination of both sides mm -hmm. that creates the action in the middle. So, that's where you have to find your magic spot. And you can't hurt the mandolin. It, it just takes time. It might take you 20 minutes, you know, to, to figure out, okay, I'll do this, do this. And do yourself a favor. Get yourself something like this, except it you, uh, needle nose, not pliers, but needle nose, long ones. And turn the wheels with that. Don't try to turn them with your fingers because you'll kill yourself. So get a nice, tiny, a miniature set of uh, long needle nose pliers that are grippers, not cutters. And just and gently turn those wheels with that, and you'll you'll have a field day. Because I, I it's one of my favorite things about mandos. Why don't they do that for guitars? Because early on, everybody figured that uh, figured out that that metal and wood don't mix in a guitar bridge. I disagree with that because of, of the J60 reissue yeah. I play. It does work if the if it's done correctly. Yeah, like I think Gibson it's probably it. too complex for mass production, and it is in most guitars. So yeah. it just it got left by the wayside. But metal mm. does yeah. doesn't do any favors to wood mm. because it's it's uh, uh, especially when you're trying to well, expand you have an action like at a, a different rate. A bolt, mm -hmm. right? Cool. It yeah. doesn't expand or contract at all, and plus, well, it does no, it doesn't. Not with it heat does. and cold. Not not like <laughs> wood does. You're talking about microscopic contraction i'm talking about your basically what you're doing when you have a piece of metal embedded in the wood of a guitar on the top 
is like you're you're bashing a bag full of marshmallows against, against a brick wall. Mm. Pretty soon the marshmallows are going to degrade because they keep hitting the mar the brick wall and they can't, they can't get through it. It's the same thing's happening in the top. The wood is vibrating against, against the steel, and it's wearing the wood out, literally. Over years, it'll start to degrade, possibly crack. The things will get loose because the wood is getting vibrated well, to pieces. Well, the wood the is steel, the right? wood is is expanding, and contracting much more than the metal is expanding and yeah. contracting. There's going really at different, different rates. rates. Yeah, yeah. So that's a good yeah. Kirsten. Yeah, that's a great Kirsten. Kirsten mm -hmm. number two. Okay. Uh, it's from. Okay. Next. Okay. <laughs> it's mouthful. Uh, it's from Peter Carpinia. Well, that's new. Probably. Welcome, Peter. Happy He's going to be from somewhere away. Pitor. Pitor. Oh, P-I-T-O-R? P-I-O-T-R. P-I-O-T-R. Yeah, P -I -O -T -R. He's Russian. That's awesome. Well, thanks, Vlad. Yeah. <laughs> Glad you Love you. That. Thank you for coming on, on board, man. Uh, <laughs> could, you, could you tell us more? That's, just, that's the Russian spelling of Peter. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, could you tell us more about K&K &K pickups? Are you using K&K &K Mini or Trinity? Would you recommend any EQ and preamp with K&K? I look for something good for my D41. Cheers oh, from Poland. Got, you've got to put a K&K &K in it. That's what I have in my 41. Mm. And I absolutely use pure EQ, mini. EQ, the yeah. Pure Mini, the three sensor, that's it. But I always play my guitars through a Fishman Loudbox artist. Not the, middle, not the little one and not the huge one. And right now, I'm not actually using the middle one. I am using the huge one. I'm mm -hmm. using the performer, and I, I love it. I don't. Know, I never liked it before, but there's something about now. Maybe I'm getting deafer in my old age or something. It's. It. I just like it. I does like it. Does it go to eleven? It does. It goes right to eleven. <laughs> Maybe it's your, because it goes to eleven. Blows <laughs> your face off. So yeah, I'll, it, it, excluding that. If you don't want to use an amplifier, use something, any kind of box, whether it be Fishman, bags, anything that has some type of EQ on it. Yeah. So that you have some control, because K&K &K can be harsh in the high end if you're not putting it through something that's got electricity going through it. So you want a box that's, that's powered, uh, has takes phantom power, it takes a battery, so you have a, you know a proper amount of EQ, like the Fishman's a good one. Good compression. Bags makes a great one. I use the bags one all the time. The little floor pedal, the Anthem. But anything that's designed for acoustic guitar, that that comes with EQ, compression, a tuner on board. There's just only a few things that actually do this. <clears throat> my my ultimate su suggestion though is to go buy a Fishman amp. Mm. You cannot go wrong. It you'll uh, that way. You'll always have exactly what you want coming at your face on stage. And then out of the back, you can send that directly to the front of the house, and they get what you're hearing. There's a post EQ out XLR to the board. Mm. So whatever you're hearing out of the amp is what's going to be sent to the board. They can basically set the strip flat and turn you up and go. And if their house is EQ'd properly, generally... It should sound exactly like it sounds coming out of the amp. And that's that's what I would do. That's what I've been doing for 20 years. And I've used every kind of pickup, every kind of undersaddle. I hate all of them except the sensors. K&K, &K, SGI. SGI uh, is another great option because they make a fatter sounding sensor. Bigger sensor. It's a larger sensor. Yeah. You can buy those directly from Brickhouse Guitars and Kitchener. So go to BrickhouseGuitars.com. They're cheaper than K&K. &K, and uh, they install exactly the same. They're the same pickup, except they're just a larger sensor. And they tend to, to make your signal fatter with uh, a little less of the super high-end, ugly, janky stuff. And you might be able to run an SGI directly through a DI with no mm -hmm. EQ. A good transformer. Deal. It has to be a good, yeah. It has to be something good. So it's the old shit in, shit out, Adam, that. But as far as applies a, to all these things, if you put something good in, the sound is going to be good, mm -hmm. right? And if you don't, it's going to be crap. 
So, great question. Jill's, 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 Jill's is kicking there. the crap out of her own face. Uh, percussion yeah. night over there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She's the percussion section. Kernel. Mm-hmm. Uh, Iggy Club says Iggy, Iggy Club uh, everybody. I think you or might girl, have said whoever it was. Idaho for Flamang isn't David in Iowa oh yeah possibly <laughs> is it Ido- Iowa or Idaho I gotta look that up One I thought he was in Idaho maybe he is in Iowa he was in a really weird state because I thought a weird state I did I told him <laughs> because because the state that he's in it has a terrible environment yeah what, it what is, is it? Iowa Iowa. Green Iowa. What do you mean it has a terrible environment? What does that mean? So, yeah, either one of those states is terrible for building guitars. Mm -hmm. Like the environment, right? But it doesn't seem to hurt him. Iowa, yeah. Green Iowa. Flamang Guitars. Go check him out. He's one of the greatest guitar builders in the world. I've never seen anything like it. I've got one of his slope shoulders. We've got to put a pickup in that. Mm -hmm. I haven't had it on stage yet. I can't believe that. I've been so busy that... I haven't done any of those things, but I, yeah, we, you got to uh, you got to check him out. Flamang, F L A M M A N G, Flamang, Green, Iowa, one of the best luthiers on the planet. Kernerched. Mm, a question from Herschel. 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 Walker. Herschel Rector. Mm-hmm. Rector. Yeah. Yes. Every time I hear his name, I want to call him Herschel Sizemore. The Why? famous mandolin player. Oh. Yeah. Who's Herschel Walker? Football player? Yeah, I think no so. No idea. Herschel Rectum. Yeah. Rector. Rector. There you go. Uh, YouTube store owner videos say glut of good guitars driving down prices, not high-end ones. Is this correct? Say that one more time. Uh, a YouTube store owner, yes. in a video, I guess, says glut of good guitars driving down prices, not the high-end ones. Not high-end ones, correct. Oh, absolutely. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that's they've, what's causing it. They've made a metric yeah. ton of guitars yeah. over the last three years. In like the one thousand to two thousand dollar yeah. range. Yeah, it's killing. It's yeah. killing the big makers mm. because nobody, everybody's starting to realize they don't need to spend five grand. And I'm, I'm proud to say I'm proud of that. Yeah, I'm proud of the reason for that. I've been screaming about this for four years on here, and people are starting to listen. That you do not have to spend a million dollars. To get a fantastic guitar, yeah. like just something that'll blow your head off, and I've proven it over the bo- all across the board, over and over and over and over again. Yeah. So, yeah, I totally agree that the people that have uh, Martin Taylor Gibson, Breedlove, like all those big, you know, box store suppliers that are, then they have to spend. $100,000 a year in, in ordering to keep the dealership. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? They're suffering right now because yeah. nobody's buying them. Well, and told, you're taking 10 of these, you're taking 5 of these, you're taking 30 of those, that's and right. giving a quota to sell. And that's why yeah. I'm so proud of Gibson because Gibson went, okay, well, we have to keep this model because this is the model. We're one of the world's premier guitar builders of in history. Yeah. So how do we sort this out and get involved in the lower price instruments? Well, let's put money into Epiphone. Boom. Yeah. And Epiphone started putting out these killer guitars mm-hmm. for under three grand, under two grand in some cases. And the uh, the the custom shop stuff is under five grand. You can buy a custom made Epiphone Frontier Texan. Uh, uh, Excellente, for they're all under four four US. Mm. Like that's stupid. I got one here. It's a ridiculous guitar. Mm. So Gibson saw the writing on the wall, and are doing the proper thing. Martin, not so much. Taylor, not at all. Taylor doesn't care. They're still charging four million dollars for guitars. Mm. Like, and I don't know how the hell they're selling them. I really don't. I, I just you definitely see less tailors these days. You in, do. They in, as far as rack space goes. They need to go back to what Bob Taylor was doing in the very beginning, building tremendous dreadnought guitars, mm. the way he built them, with no frills, no bullshit. Just build the goddamn guitar. The ones that Dan Prairie played, the ones that Kathy Matea played. The ones you know what I mean. Those were the guitars. I had them. I owned three or four of them, and and when the when the when the tide started to turn, 
in Taylor back in those days, I got out because I saw what was going on. I was like, I don't want these changes. These guitars are amazing. Why are you changing them? Well, we got to do something new. We got to do yeah. this. Well, they go ahead, and, go ahead, and look where they are now. Like they're still probably the best-selling guitar on the planet, but they're not building the guitars they were mm. 30 years ago. They're not. They're not good guitars. I, I play them all the time on the road, and I just go, wow. I haven't touched a, a newer one in years, but I do have some favorites. Yeah. Of their old, oh yeah, build stuff. They, they were incredible. Yeah. It's yeah. just they went the same thing happened to them that happened to Martin. Martin built the best guitars in the world until they decided not to, yeah. right? Until they decided to mass produce on a line. That's right. Gibson, same thing. Same but, thing. Yeah. But the, again, even on the Gibson side of Gibson, their Gibson guitars that are coming out now, they had years of problems. Mm -hmm. Now, when you go into a store and you pick up an, a J200 or a Hummingbird or a J45 Artist, you look at it, you play it and go, I would give all this money for this. Mm -hmm. they're, like they're, they've, take, they've taken back. The difference is you now don't have to give all that money right. to get that performance that's right. and that sound. That's, it, that's where it falls down yeah, yeah. for that. Exactly. If you want the name, but that's fine. They but... have the Epiphone line. Yeah. And what what it runs down to as well is when you're a guitar head, you're a guitar head. So if you end up buying an Epiphone, a couple thousand dollar Epiphone, Epiphone mm -hmm. inspired by Gibson or one of the reissues of the Texan or the whatever the hell you buy from them, and they're going to be so incredible that you you start look you're sitting there playing the thing and you're going, I got to buy a couple more of these guitars. But oh wait a minute, I could buy a Gibson. Or two of these I should buy the real I should buy the Gibson version of this mm. or I should buy you know, and and they get the, they get the brand loyalty happening again yeah. with real players who are actually using their instruments Gibson's right? done a lot lately to fix up their build quality oh, yeah. but I think they've still got a lot of room in what they're putting in them as far as transducers and oh, pickup yeah. systems they need to get rid of I, I, don't say it. Yeah, they need to get rid of. They need to start He's using. All these companies <coughs> really do need to start using sensor systems. Yeah, they need to. They need to start using K and Ks or the new LR bags Hi Fi. They're they're just a superior yeah. system. Gives, There's no yeah. question, right? Yeah. Uh, the under saddle world is over. Like, it just is, and it's unfortunately it's. It still permeates the entire industry because most people who buy a guitar are not professional musicians, and they and they buy a guitar and they may end up plugging a guitar in once or twice a year, but that's the problem. That under saddle is going to work fine for them, mm -hmm. three or four or five, six times a year, or even a guy that plays just on the weekends, it'll work for him if, if he's bashing out rhythm and he's doing a few little lines here and there, perfect. But the problem is, if he ever played a guitar with a sensor system in it, like K&K, &K, SGI, or LR Bags, he would never go back to under saddle. Yeah, it's, the sensors you know I mean? are definitely more consistent. Oh, God, yeah. I wouldn't say that they are the, the best sounding. Because as you know, they, they, the top end in a sensor... But what is, is this? What, what do you is? think is the best? A, com a combo of the under saddle and... A, a beam or a mic inside. Yeah, I don't agree with that because you can't ever get rid of that undersaddle tone. And our friend, you know, has used it oh, for yeah. years, and I hate that part of his sound. Yeah, I just hate it. I don't I, like. I don't. I like, love the top end sound. I know, yes. but there's but the top but the, the top end of an undersaddle is not real. There's no tone in a guitar like that in real life. It's it's the acoustically. It's right? the sum of the parts. Is greater than I know, one. but you're you're not actually recreating the sound of a guitar. You're recreating the the version of an acoustic guitar that that creates. Yeah, the that sensor that artist wants the sensor. <laughs> yeah, actually, it's all very the yeah. sensor actually Objective. reproduces the sound of the guitar. Yeah. and because of its nature, you sometimes have to dial back a hair of high end. Not much, I know, because I use mine every show. Yeah. And most of the time, I have to crank my high end. 
I don't have enough. I crank a little on and take a little bass off, maybe drop a little bit of mid. It sounds just like the guitar through a microphone. It's full of meat. It's fat. There's no cack with the pick. There's no pick sound. Yeah. You know what I mean? You you so, also you, though change instruments every show. I do. It's a lottery for you. Yeah. And and every instrument that you have sounds different. So True. the artist that we're talking about yes. never changes his That's right. his he he's had you know he's got but three he does, guitars in the he state. does have the best guitar in the world right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He has a, I wish I had that guitar. Yeah. I don't have I have two of them. So yeah, uh, he's got a day. That's a, that's a long rabbit hole to go mm -hmm. yeah. to go down. Yeah. So uh, we're gonna try something new this week that I that we've been thinking of for a while. Actually, we we considered this quite a while ago, but then we were thinking we don't want the show to get too seriously serious because we like to get set up here and have fun with everybody, and we still will, right? But we're gonna we're, we have a brand new a brand new feature that we're gonna show you tonight. Segment, and it's called. Geek speak with Chris. <laughs> I don't think I approved that name. I think you did. I don't think we did. Because really you are the ultimate geek. Hmm. So there you go. Tell All us. Right. Tell us what you're going to tell us this week. Well, we have had questions in the last couple weeks. There has been one or two on DIs and plugging in on stage. Yep. So we'll kick off geek speak with DIs. Yeah. Right. What Perfect. is it? What is a DI? There's a DI. Yep. There's a DI. Yep. There's a DI. I've used all of these. This is your DI. It is my DI. <laughs> and this used to be my DI. Here's a DI. Yep. Yeah. So DI stands for direct box. Direct in interface. Yeah. Direct input. Yeah. Yeah. And it's used to connect instruments, guitars, mandos, banjos, anything with a with a the transducer in it. Yep. Yeah. To uh, it, it can be a keyboard, it can be computers, it can be a drum machine, it can be anything that you use on stage that typically uses an unbalanced signal, like yep. a quarter to quarter inch cable. Yeah. And you use them when the soundboard isn't on stage. If the console or the soundboard's on stage with the artist, like in a small venue, yeah. you can just plug the quarter right inch from the, the guitar right, right into, into the, the console. Board, yeah. But if you're on a larger stage or in a venue that the board is out front, you a quarter to quarter and an unbalanced signal isn't really suitable for traveling that distance so you use a a di that changes that signal yeah from low impedance over to a balanced signal yep. which goes down typically like a, a microphone cable yeah right and uh that's what she does so an unbalanced signal that you get out of all of our instruments keyboards everything else yeah it's a two-wire system yep. so you got one conductor that has the signal on it and then the second conductor is the ground or the shield that yeah keeps it from buzzing keeps it from buzzing right yep. you need two conductors to do to do anything right um but unbalanced signals high impedance they're pretty prone to picking up other signals around them noise pops hum yeah right ac that's like electrical stuff that's laying around the floor with your cables it's not a it doesn't do long distance as well so a balanced signal and you can just see it by the the xlr connector that that we pretty much use in in the audio business is two conductors for the signal yeah. and on each one of those wires is a mirror image yeah. 180 degrees out of phase from each other yeah and the third wire is the ground yeah. or the shield that goes around them and shields them and it's a low impedance type of signal and it's kind of like a telephone line it can go forever out forever and it's and much more resilient and, and, to picking up stuff and another thing that this thing has which is really cool is if you have a if you have a guitar for instance has a super hot signal like a k and k mm -hmm. this has a minus 15 db pad so what this does when you hit the switch chris will tell you exactly what the circuit how the circuitry works but it basically decreases the volume of your input so you're not blowing up the board channel. Also, on the other side, it has a ground lift if there's a shielding problem where you're playing. Who's right? giving this lecture here, well, Tony? Just, you were, you were yeah. going to that. Yeah. So. 
So let him go. I'm, yeah. I'm more. I'm more a lot. You're doing the inside, but I want to talk about what the guitar player would need to know if he used this thing, right? So carry on. All right. So there's essentially two different types of DIs. There's a passive that doesn't require any power to work. Right. And there's active ones like these ones that actually either need a nine volt battery or this one uh, can run from phantom power. I think it can. Yeah. yeah that you'd like you'd use for a condenser mic that's yep. getting 48 volt fan from the console or you can plug in a little wall wart on stage right right so they both they both have their uh their good points and their bad points right so uh for a passive di you were starting to talk about some of the the features on them yeah so that one's getting more out tonight nice this one. yeah this yeah. they they come with a different feature set so this one has a pad switch on it which is like a uh, a step down for the signal it just it reduces the signal if you've got a real hot, hot instrument pickup, yeah yeah and, and if you're killing the the mixing console with signal you can it's typically minus 15 db some of them have different yeah. different ones um they have a ground lift switch on them which will on the xlr side it disconnects that ground wire right. from the console yeah which if you know that What's that? I didn't know that. Yeah, it disconnects you at the at the stage end, and the the ground is still connected back at the console end. But what that helps avoid is ground loops because you have different you you'll get you'll hear a ground loop in a sixty cycle sixty uh -huh. cycle hum. Yeah. 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 Um, this one, this JDI, the, the good one has That's a really nice one. Has a merge switch on it. Tell me about that. So you've got the input jack and you've got a through jack. Yep. So if you're plugging a bass guitar into the input jack, right, you can come out of the through jack into your bass amplifier on stage. Right. So you can take ju just a guitar signal, a bass guitar signal, to the console. Right. But you can still plug your, into the amp on signal. stage. But yeah. if you if you have say a stereo keyboard that you wanted to di. If you put this merge switch in, stereo. it turns this DI. It doesn't turn it into a stereo DI, it just sends but it lets you it lets you put left and right into it, nice. and you get a mono sum out of the back end. Sweet. So that's there's not a lot of DIs that I've seen that that have that. I like the radials; they're really nice. This also has this, a filter switch that uh, is a high pass at uh, 60 hertz. So if you engage that, it Perfect rolls off for the bottom guitar. end. Yeah, some of that's exactly guitars. that's exactly where you want to shelve yeah. most acoustic guitars is a high pass filter at fifty to sixty hertz. That's all, any any lower any higher than that, and you're killing the guitar. So you want to keep that's where you want to keep your high pass filters at is around fifty to sixty. So this particular one is built like a, a tank. And yeah, look how simple the guts are. Yeah, that's steel all, box. That's not other much camera, Chris. What's that? Other camera. This one here. Yeah. Yeah. This. Uh, that little silver circle there is the transformer and these jdis are well known in the industry because that's a jensen transformer yep and it's one of the best transformers you can buy yep right so benefits of a passive cheap yep typically 40 bucks for a a garden variety di yep. all the way up to one of these guys which is about 300 dollars yeah, they don't require They'll last forever. Yeah, you and can, can be even repaired. literally drive over that with a truck, yeah. and you're not going to hurt it, yeah. right? They uh, they don't require power, so yeah. they're uber uber reliable. Yeah, right. Um, they're transformer based. Yep. So if you need that ground lift because you've got buzzes in the PA or you're at a festival out in a swamp somewhere, you've got that, right? Yeah. That hey, that's oh, yeah, our life, yeah, right? Tell me about it. Yeah. Um, and if you do hit that ground lift switch, there's literally no electrical, physical wire connection between right. your guitar and the rest of the PA, right? Yeah, which which the actives don't have, right? Yeah. Um, drawbacks of a passive: if you're buying a forty dollar DI, you're getting a transformer that uh, that isn't that, that's yeah. about the size of a sugar cube, yeah. and it it they're not going to sound great. No. In fact, these sound so good. There's a lot of people that that say this transformer DI actually sweetens up a guitar, which you kind of touched on a few minutes ago, right? And the um, thing about the power DIs like this one is that 
This LR Bags is a system that I used for 20 years yeah. for fiddles. That's an ancient. I know. That doesn't and, even have an XLR on it. And the the idea behind these, because they're powered, they're powered by 9 volt batteries and 48 volts, you, you then have the option of having EQ, mm-hmm. which requires power, right? Yeah. So this was one of the very first ones that ever came out. This has low, two mid frequencies, a presence button, a treble button, and notches and, and on notches it. for the yeah. four strings of the violin. As yeah. does does your Fishman. And here's the newer version of the same idea in a Fishman, right? Yeah. Yeah. So these require power. You've got to have either a battery. You got to plug it in the wall wart. So you need stage power, or you're getting 48 volt fan. But they're still a DI. They're they're a DI, but they don't have transformer in them. No. They're electronically well, that's a, balanced. That's analog. That yeah, one. yeah. But that's that's a a good thing about them because they can be so feature rich. This thing's got uh, a tuner built into it. Oh yeah. It's this got thing's a compressor built into it. This thing's got a tuner output. Yes. On it, so that you can yep. have a send yep. out Just to a, a run, tuner. You run can your step cable on. to your yeah. pedal tuner. Yeah. This yeah. one's. That's an optional feature now that a lot of them have, is the tuner's built right on board. It's also got the boost switch. Yep. Raises you by however many dB you want. You can mm-hmm. dial it in Yeah, on you the can side. dial in how many dBs you jump up right. in volume when you hit this button when you're taking a solo. Yeah. Look, this is an incredible piece of gear, and this is what I was speaking about earlier. For anybody who has a K&K, that, that's an amazing piece of gear. This gives you the control yep. that an onboard system like an LR Bags system cut into your guitar kind yep. of the old-fashioned way of doing it would give you but even more of it even more. and the sky's the limit you can yep. have compressors you can have effects built into this uh some of them even have modeling built into them this has a compressor this has um i used this for years me and dave both use these for a number of years yeah and they just they got such beautiful controls and they're easy to see on the stage when you're yeah. standing up everything's nicely lit and it's it's a one stop. Yeah, it's a one. You don't need solution. anything else. That yeah. takes the place of an amp. Takes the place of everything. Takes the place of quarter to quarter cables yep. Yep. going between stuff and yep. crackling and and. It's got a ground lift. It's got yeah. It's got all those things. So yep. it's so it's a power DI, but it's also a one stop uh, mixing console for your acoustic guitar. For your for your instrument. Yeah. Right. If you so. if you could put a keyboard through this. And if you needed to gain it up or gain it down, you can do it if you need to tone control it. So this one doesn't even have an XLR. Right? This is so it, old. It's it, got they a do tempering now. sleeve. They do now. Yeah, on the top. Yeah, there's now there's an XLR right yeah. there. So, And they're still one of the best-selling ones. Well, and that one was meant to yeah, be used on I used to belt. wear one of these on my ass. <laughs> <laughs> when I did. This was a belt with a belt clip on them. Yeah. But after a while, people started like, we can't put that on our belt. Holy shit, it weighs four pounds. Yeah. And the, so, cord, is, the cord is dragging the, around. Yeah, yeah. Right? So that's a that's a, a good little dive into into DIs. Yeah. The, the drawbacks of the active ones and uh, on a pro stage, we still prefer to see these. Oh, yeah. This is more complexity. you got to have power for it. There's a circuit board let's in there. Be, There's controls to get snapped off. Let's be honest. Most <laughs> most guys who have these yeah. are idiots and don't know how to use them. So an engineer like Chris looks at a guy and sees this and thinks, God, I hope he actually knows yeah. how to use that. Can I just come out the through jack so yeah. I can have your guitar yeah. flat? <laughs> so that's the problem. Yeah. So the idea behind this, if you're going to have anything like this, Go somewhere private with a, just a, a single PA speaker. Plug this into the system and try it. Yeah, figure Test it all it. out. Make sure you know exactly what each thing does. It's not hard to use. Yeah. I'm an idiot. I'm a, I am about as, I'm a tech moron. And I figured this out in one night at, at a gig. I just plugged it in and went, okay, that's perfect. Like That works like a charm, right? One of the other drawbacks of these. What? They don't like beer. Oh, yeah. These, they don't <laughs> care about the beer. No, I spilled beer on that, and yeah. Chris had to fix it. Yeah, I've fixed more than a few of these for that. Um, I think this first episode of Geek Speak requires a little Jillica a, scotch. A little scotch? Yes. I think that's about it for DIs. Big hand for Coot. Coot's the man. Mr. Smarty Pants. I'll tell you, 
honest to God, I've known this guy for 30 years, and I've seen him fix things that I thought were unrepairable. Everything to you is unrepairable. Pretty much. Yeah. 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 It's all death and yeah, pretty much. Yeah. It's, you're yeah. ready yeah. to throw it off. The, oh, yeah. The, the TV wouldn't and come I have. on. He and Ginger had to go pick a guitar up out of the woods today. Yeah. I did. Actually, yeah. he did actually throw it yeah, off I the did. deck. What was it you... Uh, you lost off the back of the credenza and piled all the jacks through the back. Oh, there. yeah, the, my, the whole mixing my, board. my whole yeah. mixing board. Yeah. yeah. He fixed it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was Good like, I'll to, never record again. I'll never record again. The you studio's thought, You closing. thought your Xbox was broken because the <laughs> HDMI cable was bad? Yeah. <laughs> oh, all right. God. All right. Let's get a few could, more questions. I could, I could go on. We get some super chats. Too. Thanks to Chris Coot for that. Now, we're going to do that every week, too, because I think we get so many questions on here and so many questions through the week. Because you guys don't realize this, but I read every single comment that appears on my channel every day. They come right to my phone. I see everything you say. So, yeah, there's a lot to there's a lot of good stuff we can talk about. So, Kurt next for the next question. Uh, we have a super chat from Colin Dolan. Super chat from who? Colin, Colin Dolan. Colin Dolan. Hmm. Uh, can you please tell us which is the correct way to attach a strap to a guitar? I sometimes see people <laughs> attaching the wide part of the strap at the heel and the thin adjustable part at the pin end. Or the end pin. Well, you you always put the fat, pretty part up by your face. With the gold nigga on Yeah. It. Yeah. You put the adjustable tail asshole thing Down at the, the back. back. Yeah. You don't want people to see that. You want to see the money shot up yeah. here. So yeah. you put the beautiful part, the, the fat JP part and here. The rhinestones. And you put the adjustable... Sad, fat boy tailing in the back yeah. there. You put that in the back. The adjustment right out at the last. Notch. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Beyond the last. Notch. Like it's the it's the it's the tail tied on twine. Yeah. That's eight inches long. Yeah. That, you, you've yeah. got those extendo straps. Yeah. The yeah. extra piece. Yeah. I need extendo straps. <laughs> like a seatbelt extension. On yeah. Mm. Oh yeah. It's worse than that. It clips in like a car seat. Oh yeah. I just get a. I guess you get a twenty like. 20 foot length of rope now to tie my guitars on you should <laughs> you should just get a cargo strap <laughs> ratchet strap, <laughs> ratchet strap. What, yeah well, those come along yeah yeah, yeah. Back, Next. backstage before the show yeah. hold it in and winch it down <laughs> oh yeah uh super chat from jamie reed jamie reed happy wednesday jp ginger and wheezy chris <laughs> i have a gibson j45 I'm just as, am I just as well to keep my LR Banks pickup, or would I be better with a K&K? &K? Everything's better with a K&K. &K. I'm sorry. Unless it's a, unless it's an LR Banks Hi-Fi. You, did you hear what you just said? Yeah, everything's she, better than a K&K. &K. I, said, I said everything's better with a K&K. &K. Oh, with, you said. With a K&K. &K. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Like, if, I just, I, I, maybe your guitar sounds great. If it does, don't mess with it. Right. But the honest truth is, under saddles are, are over. The the, the 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 sensor pickup is clearly superior. Don't Easier they... to install, less <coughs> maintenance. No battery, no bullshit. Yeah. No Unless you're using the hi fi. Yeah. It does have a battery and a and a, and a, and a, and a volume and tone wheel. And a preamp. In the goes, jack. In the yeah. In the jack. Yeah. Not in the not in the, it doesn't you have to drill a hole in the guitar. No. So and it's I I'll I'll deal with that. Because I've recently come into a couple of guitars that have yeah. a system. And I love it. It sounds incredible. Yeah. So but it does need a battery. It does need a battery. But K&K, &K, no battery, no nothing. Just yeah. plug and go. And so, incredibly hot at the output. Yeah. So boost. I don't know. Like, if you if you like the sound of what you've got right now, don't change it. Mm -hmm. But if you if you think there's something beyond that world, there is. And just pull that out and put a K&K &K in there. Yeah. And you'll be happy. Or the, an SGI. You know what? The nice, thing, the nice thing about a K&K... You could you could virtually put a K and K in without disturbing exactly any any of your current install. Yeah, and try listen it. to it and decide. Yeah, and if you don't like the K and K, don't use it. Just go just go backwards <laughs> and use what's what's already in it. Right. So Good next. Mm -hmm. uh, super chat from Stephen Baker. Stephen Baker, who is not in the tub. Oh boy, mm. he, he had to work. What? Yeah, he's not in the tub. Oh, wow. He's mm. at the computer. I'm not used to having him clothed. I know. No, me neither. <laughs> Bothers me somehow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> having some trouble with keeping time, I can count to four, but you wouldn't know it from my playing. Please recommend some exercises. Nice shirt. There's only one exercise for timing. is playing with a metronome. 
You get a metronome out and get a tune that you know really well. Make sure you play it exactly in time with the metronome so that the notes that you're playing are right on the click. And then the other thing you need to do is play along with records because records, recordings of stuff that you play is, is the original timing of it. And if you can't play along with that, uh, find uh, use one of the apps like the Amazing Slowdowner. And, and slow the recording down and play with it. And get and that's how you do it. There's no magic. There's no tool that creates Well, that's timing. a tool. There's no tool. You have, to, you have to play along with something that's in time. And you have to pay attention to the feel of players that you hear. When you listen to a player, there's a feel. It isn't just that he's in time, because he's not in time. No player is in time. They play with time. Mm. They play around it. They go around it and they keep it. But they never hit it dead on. They go around it and up and over it. And they just... And that's the feel. That the way that they yeah. deliver something while the foot is beating at, at 110 constantly. They're playing at 18, 112, 19. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that's... So you've got to learn that. And the only way to do it is to play along with it. So get an app that slows music, slows recordings down, start playing with something and play it till you've got it perfect and then speed it up five beats and do it there, speed it up five beats, do it there until you're up to actual time. And that's, that's the best way to do it. Turn next. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, super chat from Ted Whitmore. Ted Whitmore. I got the artist. I'm assuming he means Fishman artist. Um, but here's my wonder. Why do I get feedback when I change chords from an open E to an open F? Probably doesn't make sense, but it happens. You need to either change the fa hit the phase switch. Mm -hmm. It's probably going to be the first thing that will fix it. And if you still if that doesn't fix it, then you need to turn up the anti-feedback button a bit. But the phase switch will probably end all of your, all of your uh, feedback problems. That's it. This, 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 there's no other answer. And don't stand, don't dire stand don't so close. directly in front of the amp with yeah. your dick out and yeah. playing balls in the wall right Anything's going to feed yeah. back if you're standing in front of it Yes. with the volume cranked up. Correct. Yeah. Connect. Is, yeah. Hmm. There's a super chat from Mr. Cam McMaster. Hmm. Cam disaster. Mm -hmm. Long absent from the show. There's a clam. Um, he says, JP will have to start buying Australian guitars, so they boomerang back to him. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. I'd love to have a maton. What's clam welding tonight, I wonder? Who knows? Okay, okay next. Da, da, da. Uh, no more super chats? A question from Corey McCormick. Corey. Corey. Uh, what is your honest take on the Laureate series Alvarez? Also, they are built in uh, China, not Japan. And what guitars are you taking on tour in April? What do I think of this? <laughs> it's like one of the best guitars I've ever played. It's it's unbelievable. It's I don't even know what to say. Like they're just so well built. Mm. And 
It's got the hi-fi system in it. It does, yeah. and it's killer. Mm. Something you have to realize about these guitars, of course, they're built in China because they're building them in mass production, right? But the, here's the deal. The Laureate, every single piece of wood and material that went into this guitar was hand-picked by the people in Connie. Mm -hmm. They are picking every single bit of, that goes into this guitar. They have a new bridge style. They have a partially, this is lightly torrefied mm -hmm. and then stained. This is not a true torrefaction. It is uh, what what Chris calls uh, cooked. Cooked. Yeah. It is slightly cooked, not fully torrefied. Which and there's a reason for that because they want the they want the lignin to die naturally from playing, which changes the tone, the overall tone in the end. So you have the finest selection. They are hand picking all the rosewood, all bound in faux mammoth. Mahogany neck to die for, and the the normal crazy, beautiful profile that Yaris have, and so you're not you're just not gonna find mm. a better production guitar than yeah. this one, and it's stupid cheap. It's like fourteen hundred dollars, out of control. Like it's out of control. And that thing. was with the pickup, in it. Yeah. That was complete. It, they all come with yeah. with the new hi-fi system. Yeah. The Bags hi-fi system. And like even the headstock, look at the abalone they chose for the headstocks. Like they did not skimp on this thing at all. That is yeah. You got a, you got your QC sticker right there. Like this 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 thing has passed through rigorous rigorous quality control. Yeah. And I'm <clears> telling <throat> you, the proof's in the pudding. <laughs> Just unreal. It's beautiful sounding guitar. It's just killer. It's unbelievable. It's a very it's a very quiet, visually quiet. Visually very guitar. Quiet. Yep. But then when you start looking at it yep. and you all you, kinds of things draw your eye. Yeah, and yeah. and you look at the build quality of it. You're going like, this thing is gorgeous. It is. It's it's, it's, it's understated. It's every bit a twenty eight. Yeah, every bit. You can put this up against a D twenty eight, and you're. The thing about it is, is it sounds different. Mm. It has a different tonal profile than a twenty eight. It has super clean bottom end that a twenty eight doesn't. 28 is like power and mud and bottom. Mm. This has Grit. a super projective yeah. bottom end, beautiful, super high end, and this nice mid, like it sparkles everywhere. And it's, and it's just not normal for a dreadnought to do that. But it's the way they did it. And you can, oh, also inside this guitar is astounding. All of the bracing is Adirondack. Mm. Adirondack bracing, it's spotless. You could eat your dinner inside this guitar. It's that clean. And, and you're that not going to have a side of sawdust. If your dinner was soup. Right down to the curving. <laughs> They're using mahogany curving, and every single piece of it is matched mm. to this body, to the guitar. They're not putting anything factory into this guitar and building it in a factory. Yeah. That's what. That's why the Laureate is so crazy. Yeah. It's a factory built guitar with 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 custom shop materials. Mm. So that's how they did it. And uh, I'll be reviewing this and another one that I got to show you. This oh, <laughs> that just gives me cold, <laughs> cold chills. Cold chills. Okay. Any more super chats? Uh, we got. Well, you didn't answer the rest of that question. What guitar are you taking on tour in April? Oh, I don't know. I have no idea. It plays I won't, a game of any, I won't meeny, know money, until no. then. It could be anything. God knows. Uh, I got a question from Adam Dunn. Adam Dunn. Uh, what's your favorite banjo that you would recommend and why? Guitar player here considering a banjo. That's a hard one because I because my favorite banjo is a John Hartford Deering. And I got one on order right now. I'm finally going to get one after all these years. I've wanted one my entire life. 
But other than that, my whole life I've played Gibson Mastertones. So if you can afford one, buy it, because you're not going to ever be sorry. No. The other option is uh, Gold Tone. Makes a great banjo. And also, the banjo that makes that's making the most waves right now in the world is Recording King. Their banjos are world class. Like there's some serious, serious players playing Recording King banjos right now. Can you say there's a difference in how they sound? Like the, the Recording King banjo you had versus the Gibson you had? Oh, it's much louder. Mm. There's way, way more power in the Recording King. The Recording King was almost gaudy. It was, it was so, yeah, it was it was, so it bright. It was so and loud. huge yeah. that you just. Yeah, I had to. I had to get rid of it. It was too much band. It, it just didn't have the. The finesse I wanted. If I'd have been playing in a bluegrass band all day long. Yeah. Trying to out, trying to beat on an upright bass and a yeah, guitar. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I'm I'm more of a finesse player, and that's why I love the John Hartford because it. It's gonna. It, I'm gonna tune it down a whole tone like he did. Mm -hmm. It's a. It's a fatter, deeper, be more beautiful sounding banjo. Yeah. But if you want straight bluegrass, I mean, it gives a master tone, recording king, gold, gold tone. tone. Yeah. Those are, they make fantastic banjos and Deering, Deering makes great banjos below the Hartford as well, but they're just as expensive as Gibson's. So. They make great banjos, so you those are there's very few pots to dip into. Gibson, Deering, Recording King, Gold Tone. That's yeah. about it. Yeah, I don't really. Uh, there's, there's what's the OM, OHM, OME. Yeah, but OME, they're but, yeah. They're, yeah. but they're you can't find them. Yeah, you know, right. Like they're Stelling, same way. Can't find those yeah. anymore. Like, but those are twenty thousand dollar banjos, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. So if you want to get into a great banjo for cheap, Recording King. Yeah. Gold Tone. Deering to to a certain extent, you're gonna you're gonna jump up a bit, mm -hmm. but and then master tone, you're gonna pay four grand for one of those maybe massive tone massive bone, <laughs> so yeah. So good luck. There's lots to choose from. Kernert, a uh, question from Roy. Roy, uh, how would you describe the sound of redwood top and Indian rosewood back and sides? Alvarez Yari has a new model with a set of woods. I love Yari. I think they are top five. I don't know because I haven't played one. Oh. Mm -hmm. But I'll look into it. I will. I've played Redwood guitars once in the past, but I don't remember. It was a lot like cedar, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. So uh, long, long, loose grain. Yeah, it'll yeah. be it'll be it'll be fat but bright. It'll be great for finger picking. Yes, yeah. huge for finger picking. Yeah, yeah. Kernerks. A uh, question from Ronald McGraw. Ronald McGraw. I have a Grand Reserve Flame Maple Boucher. What type of string should I use for rhythm, medium or light? Oh, lights. Mm. Yeah, go lights. Use a, if, you, if you're doing a lot of rhythm, hard rhythm, uh, go with the Dario XS because their light strings actually feel like mediums. They play like a medium, but they're light gauge yeah. uh, pressure. Without beating you up. Yeah. And they last longer than elixirs. So, mm. in my experience, they have. I love elixirs too. I'll use them both. But the Diderio XS, they're the best, they're the most lasting string on the market. And they sound and they play and sound and feel like a medium for yeah. some odd reason, except the, their action is flawless. Super fast action, but you feel like there's more meat behind the string when you're hitting it, mm -hmm. right? So, yeah. Kernert. Mm. Stephen Baker says, "I'll give you a Zoom link on Facebook where you paste it here, so some of us can hang out for an hour after the show." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll email it right to you. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> we'll text it to you there. Yeah, can, can you just put it in the chat? <laughs> Why not? And yeah. they can all Zoom sure, Zoom chat driver. together. Any more super chats? Um, there's one more question. Okay, here we From here. Steve Bernard. Cool. Can you remember Tanglewood Guitars? I watched an old video of you doing some sort of workshop or demonstration for yeah. them. Yeah, I used to work with those guys way back. But uh, they were one of the companies that, you know, utilized the old, uh, we'll design this in the UK or Germany or wherever and get it built in China. Mm -hmm. And that, that model unfortunately fails about 80% of the time because there's no quality control. Yeah. No supervision. So, no. 
So the Tanglewood had a fantastic idea, and they made some beautiful guitars and basses. Because uh, Mike played a Tanglewood bass for years with me. But unfortunately, I don't even think they're around anymore. I, I don't. Heard I, them I've never years. heard of them in years. Yeah. And it wasn't their fault. It was just their supply chain fell apart. Because that's how they were doing it. They were designing b- brilliant instruments, and they were having. They had a fa- some factory in China doing it for them, and it just falls apart if yeah. you're if you're not able to go there and supervise, supervise and, and control your QC and all that shit. It's it does it can't last. Yeah. So yeah. Any more? Nope. All right. Let's have a question, and this will fill up the spots of fifteen and sixteen. 15 and 16. 15 and 16. Uh, what is the voltage oh. required to run that Fishman? You're talking about Platinum. Phantom, right? Yeah. What, yeah. Is the, what is the, what is the standard Phantom, Phantom voltage? What is the sta- standard Phantom voltage yeah. for our Fishman box? There are any, any, any stage or mic, yeah. anything that uses what is Phantom. The, what is the yeah. standard voltage? That's a good Kirsten. That was a good Kirsten. We're feeding off That's each a other good here. Kirsten. Anybody? Mm-hmm. Who's first? I'm just letting them roll in while I roll the sponsor um, bottom third. God, I love that Lori. Oh. Ginger's driving it over there. I can't. I'm, now I can't get that guitar out of my yeah. head. Yeah. <laughs> Toasty. It's much like the other one I'm going to show you later. Toasty. Yeah. <laughs> 69, Stephen. 60, of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course he did. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Maroon Baker. He also got 169. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Good Lord. Uh, dear. Yeah. People are funny. Two, 138. <laughs> <laughs> What do we got there, Junior? Who's first? Uh, let's see here. We got uh, Greg Richard at uh, 48 volts. Yep. Greg Richard, you are number 15. Right after Jamie Reed. And the next with 48 was Colleen Green. Colleen Green, you're number 16. All right, guys. Big hand for you guys. Thanks a lot for joining us here. And uh, we went way over. It was fun, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. I like this. Be safe, everybody. We'll see you next week. Don't forget, if you don't, if you watch this and love it, tell your friends. Make sure you get people to subscribe. It's incredibly important to us. Hit the like button, all that stuff. And make sure to check out our other videos guitar stuff with John drops every Monday night and there'll be other varying things going on throughout the year I'm sure Uh, but keep your eyes open I got huge huge developments happening here reviews to come on Yamaha Yeri Gallagher Kinglos violins um, LR bags pickups Uh, there's just so much stuff so Keep your eyes open. We'll see you every Monday night and every Wednesday night here with my buddy Chris Coot and the lovely Gingers in the house. We'll see you next Wednesday night on String Theory. Love you guys.